very excited to bring Megan Dory to you today. But first, just by way of setup and kind of context about the skills conversation is really about skills becoming the centerpiece for talent strategy. Traditionally, we've used, we've been very job focused in all of these talent processes and really in the way that we think about, about jobs from a business perspective. But skills and the skills conversation is really about unlocking skills from jobs and threading them through not only talent strategy, like you see on this slide here, but really business business strategy and capability development. And that's really the story that Megan's gonna, gonna tell today is how that shows up in a really, really practical, robust way. So in 2012, GE Digital started off as a center of excellence uh, in good old San Ramon, California. Um, like every other tech company, our CEO at the time, Jeff Melt, knew we had to be out in Silicon Valley in order to you know, really thrive um, as a tech organization. Megan, one other thing I want to point out that you mentioned was publishing the names of the people involved. And it is, I mean, it's a well-known technique in sales. We don't use it enough in HR and talent and learning is this social proof or positive social pressure. When I learn that other people are, are using something or doing something, you know, it creates this sort of fear of missing out, draws people into the change. It's a really smart way to engage, engage the organization, making the, those contributors visible. And it's, you know, cheap and easy to do most of the time. Oh, yeah. There is at one point an in-person meeting. My leader like went around and had everyone, you know, slowly like stand, like stand up if you were in a meeting about the job structure. And we yeah. had a couple of things come in through chat as well. <laughs> Thanks. So I know Jennifer asked as an OCM consultant, she's interested in who you identified as your greatest change advocate and who had the greatest impact. I think it's, it's like a three-part answer because it's, mm -hmm. You know, thinking about how people helped in the build, for, you know, it's like we built this thing, then we launched this thing, and now we have new and different needs. Now we need people to use the tools to do the assessment. So we have the data that we can then come back to leaders to help inform and validate strategy. And then there's like the evolution of how our business leaders now using the insights, like how are we evolving? So it's multi-year journey of while so many companies are talking about, we need to overhaul our job structure or our job architecture in order to understand the skills. You know, for us, you know, again, that visual of like 20, 2013 to 2017, that was all of building all of the models across the, the functions. Megan, question came in. How often did you update the capability details based on the marketplace and business strategy? Great question. So this goes back to Brian's call out of this was before 2020 when a lot mm -hmm. of amazing tools entered the marketplace. <laughs> this was something where I oversaw a project that was really time consuming to then do an overhaul of the validation. And so what we did was ask, um, so one of the, the options when you were assessing your team was to click not applicable. So some lessons learned, you are constantly selling this, right? Like, so I, I mentioned, you know, the, the years of we built the thing and then it's cool. Now that we have the thing, what can the thing do for you? What? How are we using the data to inform strategy? Constantly selling, constantly telling stories, having leaders talk about, you know, it's not just we did this, now it's done, and it just flows. So never underestimate, like, the constant need to be selling. 